everyone and welcome back to my channel and in today's video I've got another DIY video for you and I'm going to be showing you five different Harry Potter DIY and craft ideas and show you how to make them. It's been a while since I've done a DIY video and I've really enjoyed making it and it's just taken a little bit longer so that's why there's been a bit of a delay in this video but I'm really pleased with how these turned out and I hope you like them too. These are just some ideas that you can adapt so if you don't like the characters that I'm doing for example you can just adapt them and do your own or just adapt the ideas to whatever you have. It's just a bit of fun because I love Harry Potter and I wanted to do a DIY video like I've done with Pokemon and other gaming things and also The Lion King. I thought I needed to add Harry Potter to the collection. So let's get straight into it. So for the first DIY I'm going to show you how to make a Hedwig plushie. So what you need to do first is take a piece of printer paper and just roughly sketch out the template. So I've done it a little bit like a ghost so it's kind of like an upside down tear and then add a couple of wings and then just cut it out like I'm doing here. And then you need to find some white felt because Hedwig is a snowy owl. Fold the felt in half and then pin the pattern that we've just made to our felt and then cut them out like I've done here. And then you need to cut some yellow felt for the eyes, so you just need to cut two yellow circles. And I'm going to do them quite big because I want it to look quite cute and if you do big eyes things tend to look that little bit cuter. So these are Hedwig's big eyes and again you need to pin them, so you just need to pin through Hedwig's eyes. It's a bit, bit savage but the pins aren't going to be there the whole time. And then you just need to sew on the eyes like I'm doing here. I chose some yellow thread so you won't see it, just to sew on the eyes. And then I'm sewing in a black pupil. And I've got some thicker, thicker thread here so that it wouldn't take me so long. But you can also add a bit of black felt or draw it on with a sharpie, totally up to you. I just did an embroidery eye, so I did a circle and then filled it in. And I repeated that with the other eye too. And then once I had got the eyes in place, I added a beak and this is me doing the beak. It's just a little upside down triangle. And again, I filled it in with the thread and I left a little bit of white felt free. So it looks like it's got a little bit of a highlight because owls have shiny beaks and I wanted it to kind of look a, that little bit cuter. So there we go, that's the beak done. And I also added some little feathers, just added some V shapes with the black thread, the same black thread as the eye and the beak, and then added a couple of highlights in the eye with some white thread. And once you have done all the features, you then need to pin the back of the plushie to the front and then sew all the way round. And I just did a simple running stitch and then went back in between the gaps and make sure you leave a little bit at the bottom like I've done here so we can stuff him and I don't have any stuffing so I'm using cotton wool that I've just broken down but if you've got stuffing that's probably a little bit better but cotton wool works just fine so you just have to stuff Hedwig and once you are happy with how much he is stuffed then you just need to sew along that line and I always sew my plushies around the front so I don't turn it inside out because I quite like the look that it gives. It gives a very, very handmade look, but if you prefer to, you can, of course, pin your plushie inside out and then sew it that way. It's totally up to you. But here is my little Hedwig and I'm really, really pleased with how it turned out. I think it's super cute. So the second DIY is a monster book of monsters notebook. So what you need for this is a small notebook and some brown felt. And you just need to measure roughly the size of the notebook to the felt, but you need to make it a little bit bigger. So we need to make the brown felt that little bit bigger. And I'm just roughly cutting it once I'd marked it out because we want it to look quite jagged and furry because it's a monster book of monsters. It's quite it's quite rough, it's meant to be a monster, it doesn't need to be a clean line. So I'm just bunching the felt up and then just hacking at it, if you like, with the scissors. And then once I'd done, I just took my hot glue gun and 
just glued along the felt like this and you have to work quite quickly with a hot glue gun so if you've got any other glue that might work a little bit better but a hot glue gun works just fine so just adding the glue and then quickly putting the book on top and doing the same so we are covering the book with some brown felt and then once you've covered it you might want to just trim a little bit more hack into it a bit more to make it look that little bit more jagged kind of want it to look like the dog's eating it or the cat's eating it or the monster's eating it Anyway, so this is how it looks once I had covered it with the felt. And you might want to leave those scraps for later, just, just a tip. And I added some googly eyes like this. There we go. Doesn't look that scary at the moment. So what we need to do is we need to make a mouth. And what you need for this is some red felt. And you need to cut two pieces of red felt, one for the top and one for the bottom of your notebook. And again with the hot glue we just need to put one bit of red felt here at the top or the front in the middle and the same at the back and because this is a monster book it needs to have some teeth so I use some white felt and just cut some little triangles out and fix them to the top and the bottom like this and I made the teeth very uneven because it doesn't have to be even because it looks more scary if the teeth aren't even and I also added a tongue as well so I cut a piece of red felt into a tongue shape and then attached it to the inside of the top part just underneath the mouth at the top and yeah I think it works quite well you don't want too long a tongue though because you don't want it to catch on anything so now I'm taking the bits of felt that I cut off from earlier like I said remember to save your bits of felt and I'm just adding them to the top just to give it a little bit more kind of dimension and to make it look a little bit more realistic that's probably not the right word but I think you know what I'm trying to say it kind of gives it a little bit more dimension and I also wrote with a gold pen on some white felt monster book of monsters so the monster book of on the top and then monsters on the bottom and then cut around it and attached it with my hot glue gun to the book so you want to make sure that it's central and you can read it but yeah I'm really pleased with how this writing turned out I used a gold paint pen but you could use a gold gel pen and I also added some sequins just to make it look that little bit more finished because I have some brown sequins don't really know why I have brown sequins but I do so that is the monster book of monsters all finished So now I'm going to show you how to do a Phoenix shrink plastic pendant. So what you need for this is some shrink plastic. I have clear shrink plastic and I sand my shrink plastic down so I can use colour pencils on it. But if you don't want to use colour pencils, you don't have to do this. So you just have to then draw your Phoenix shape. And I base mine loosely on the front cover of the Order of the Phoenix because I really like the artwork. It's, I think it's probably one of my favourite book artworks from the series. So I just coloured it in with my colour pencils and making sure to do it much bigger because obviously the clue is in the name, shrink plastic, it will shrink in the oven. And also the colours will get darker as well so don't go too dark. So I'm just using oranges, yellows and reds and just adding in some shadow with some brown. But you don't need to do too much detail on this step because you can add some paint pens on top once you have put it in the oven. So once you have done your design, again, you don't have to do a phoenix if you don't want to. You can do whatever you like. You can maybe do Dobby or Harry or your favourite magical creature. It's up to you. I'm just doing a phoenix because I really like phoenixes. I really want one because I think they're really pretty. And once you have drawn your design, you just need to cut it out. And again, be very careful because shrink plastic is quite difficult to cut. So you want maybe smaller scissors like I've got here, especially if you're cutting around like feathers or fur. It's just easier to use smaller intricate scissors because it can snap quite easily. And once you have cut it out completely, you can add a hole punch. I added my hole punch to the wing because I didn't think the head was big enough to take the hole. Now we just need to put it in the oven and it will shrink. Just follow the instructions on shrink plastic because your sh every shrink plastic manufacturer is a little bit different. But after it has gone into the oven, it will shrink like this and it will get thicker as you can see it's quite sturdy and so there's our little forks the phoenix 
and I'm using my paint pens to just add a bit more definition which is fine you can do that or you don't have to do that it's totally up to you I'm just adding a bit more yellow and orange just to make it stand out that little bit more and I'm also using some gold gel pen some gold glitter gel pen to go on top just to make it look that little bit sparkly because I wanted it to be a bit sparkly I quite like my shrink plastic charms to have a little bit of sparkle in them I sometimes use nail polish or nail varnish to add the sparkle but I've run out of gold sparkly nail polish so I had to use a gel pen instead and I also use my white gel pen as well just to add the eye and add a pupil with a black pen but once you are happy with your design, you, once you're happy that you've got enough sparkle on it like I have here, you just need to add a coat of clear nail polish or nail varnish and then it will seal your design. And I also added a couple of coats of gold nail varnish to the back just because I thought that would finish it off quite nicely and the gold would come through. So there is my Phoenix necklace. So now I'm going to make three badges and I've got these badges that you can get from Amazon. They are clear and you just add your own design in them. So all you do is take the back off and draw around the back and draw your design in there. And they're quite cheap. I think you get about 30 for about six pounds. So you can just do as many as you like here. I'm doing Luna, Ginny and Hermione because they are the three queens of Harry Potter. And I was really pleased with how Luna turned out. I did her Spectre Specs and her Radish Earrings and I think she turned out the cutest. And I really like her specs and I added some glitter gel pen again and just had fun just drawing these cute characters and I'm using my markers just to color them in but you don't have to use markers you can do whatever you want you don't have to do this style you can maybe do your house badge if you want to maybe you can make a set of four house badges you could do a Slytherin, Gryffindor, Hufflepuff or Ravenclaw let me know in the comments below actually what house you are in. I am in Hufflepuff. I'm interested to know what you're in, so do leave me a comment with what house you're in. And here is Ginny. I thought her eyes are maybe a little bit too close together, but I'm still really happy with her. And there's Hermione. So once you have your designs drawn out, you just need to cut around them with some scissors and then insert them into your badges. And there we go. We have Ginny, Luna and Hermione badges. So for the final craft, I am doing some hammer beads. I find these quite relaxing to do and it's really easy to find patterns. So it depends what you want to do. I'm doing a golden snitch. So I did the snitch in a variety of yellows and golds and then added some wings in white, gray and clear beads. But you can do whatever you like. And these are really easy to find patterns. All you really need to do is maybe Google Harry Potter pixel art or Harry Potter hammer beads. And there are so many designs that you can follow or you can make up your own. So this is my golden snitch. I was really pleased with how it turned out. I think it took me a while to get the wings symmetrical, but you know, that that's fine. Just a bit of counting issues that I had going on there. So once you have your designs, you just need to take a piece of parchment paper. Maybe you have paper that came in your bead set. Some bead sets do. I just have so many beads. And a tip for this is, is to try and use beads that come from the same set because lots of different companies make these and they don't always make them the same. So they have slightly different melting points. So if you're mixing your beads, some of them melt quicker than others and you don't get the best iron and that is why i always blame on my ironing because my ironing is terrible i don't iron anything other than hammer beads and the occasional shirt if i absolutely have to so that's my excuse for the ironing not being great but maybe you'll be better at ironing than me so i also did a dobby as you can see at the top there i kind of made my own design for him after looking at some i kind of adapted a couple and I'm also doing a Deathly Hallows so that I can have a keyring and people will know that I am part of the quest. And I did that outline in black and filled it in with clear beads. And here I am ironing. And once I had done with them, I put them onto some keychains and those are done. So that's all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I, 
I'm really pleased with how these DIYs turned out and I do want to make a part two because I had quite a few ideas that didn't quite make the cut for this video. So if you want to see that, leave me a comment down below and let me know which one your favourite was. And if you like this video, you know, emotionally, do leave it a like down below as that really does help me out and it will let me know if you want another one. And if you're new, subscribe and turn the notification bell on and go and look at my other DIY videos too if you like this one. But that's all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.